Welcome, fellow Lushes. Come on in, pull up a bar stool, and enjoy some cocktails with dimples and the beard. So this one's going to be, might be a little more serious. Um, we're going to be talking with Oksana. She's in Ukraine right now as everything is going on. And uh, we wanted to have her on just to get, um, just to hear some voice from over there yeah. and uh, show support for the people of Ukraine and uh, all the bullshit that they're having to go through. Thanks to fucking Putin. Fuck you, Putin. I hope you hear this. You ride up on your fucking horse shirtless. So I can punch you in the dick. When you have to be pantsless then? When you can punch through pants. Yeah, I'd rather be pantsless. Punch it would be fun dick. to punch him in the dick. But anyway, with that, we're probably going to be murdered by the KGB now. So that's right. It might be the last episode. But this is filmed at his house. You can go there. Yeah, it's uh, Teller Road and Nina. Uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, we'll get that silliness out of the way. Unless anyway. she wants to get silly, we'll go with that. We just want to okay. give her a platform. Yeah, so if this one gets a little more serious than our normal ones, uh, it's worth it. Um, we think it's important to hear you know, from, from somebody over there, what's going on and, and just get their perspective. So, so please watch the whole 12 hour episode. Cause we're going to give her all the time yeah, she needs. And we will like a telethon. We're yeah. just going to stay here. The whole I'm pretty time. sure. I'm pretty sure it ended up going 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's how long we talked. All right. Here you know. we go. Never keep a pretty lady waiting. hello can you hear me well we can how are you um i mean I'm <laughs> fine i guess <laughs> yeah that's a that's a strange question to ask i guess hard um, one to question ask these days but right um let's introduce you i i cannot pronounce your last name i don't even want to try <laughs> is, is the t silent or the k silent one of them's got to be the, silent nothing silent oh wait how do <laughs> i say <Ukraine>. that <laughs> um is it's tkach okay it means weaver in ukrainian okay. um i don't know you can try it it's like catch but but you have to add t at the beginning <laughs> so it's oksana catch yes very yes good. there you, you know go that. way to go <laughs> and you are you are currently in ukraine um yes and we i we both saw you on on josh potter's show and uh, and just thought it was is was riveting to um, see him talk to people that are over there with everything going on right now. Um, so I, we we wanted to reach out and give you another platform to you know express anything and and and. Uh, and Thank and... you, I appreciate it. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be expressing though. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a war. It's it's terrible. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Making sure you're safe, obviously, is number one. Yes, I am. I mean, I'm relatively safe because I'm still within Ukraine and it's, you know, the Russians have many bombs. I'm I'm starting to think that's the only thing that they like know how to do is to bomb places. Yeah. So they could drop a bomb on my city at any time. It's just it doesn't it wouldn't help them, but they can because yeah. nothing, nothing they've done so far has helped them. So but they still keep doing shit. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm relatively safe. Um, cool yeah well, that's good to hear yes. i mean you know like you said you just i mean but yeah i don't i mean we don't want this thing to be like super serious and you know we want to have some fun with this and uh you know but but it is it is good, good to, to know yeah yeah good to talk to to people over there and and you know let, let the world hear kind of your side of things and and because i mean i think pretty much everybody's on board that uh you know russia kind of sucks in this thing <laughs> and uh Not not everybody have you seen so there's this new fake that the americans sponsored some labs that like create yes. bio weapons to kill russians and then all of these like far-right american i don't know media picked it up and they were like yeah our government sucks this yeah. war in ukraine is not real and i was like oh my god can yeah. you like can you just like travel to the east and then like, see what's happening because you know people are dying it's terrible yeah exactly that's well that's... someday maybe we'll have the news all on board just to tell the truth and be done with it and maybe i don't think it'll ever happen <laughs> i think people really like to like do the conspiracy stuff even when it's based on like a terrible war it's kind of amazing to me yeah but, it's yeah. it sucks when people are talking that it's nonsense you know and not really happening when when like you said people are dying there and i i don't know does do, is do the people of ukraine have the divide politically like we do in the united states like 
I mean, are there, are there, you know, the before the war, you're yeah. asking before the war, was there a well, divide? Or? Yeah. At any time, like, you know, is there the, the conservatives, the liberals, and they can't talk to each other and they fight constantly or um, are you so historically like it used to be that we had like the west and the east and so the west is like super nationalist i guess and the east is like more pro-russian um and you know russia would feed that rhetoric because they needed the divide but the more the more stuff would happen the more protests would happen like it was just it would just bring us closer together and so i guess maybe 20 years ago it was there and today it's just it's not there at all because oh. we kind of you know we kind of um what, what, what is the word I'm thinking of? <laughs> anyway, the divide is not there anymore because the language, the, you know, the politics, the nationalism is not even an issue because, you know, we're being like literally attacked and killed. So it's very hard to, uh, to, to debate about like what language we should be speaking when, sure. when we should be defending our country. So it, in, in a way, it, this really helped us, like this terrible war really helped unite us. So there's like not even a little... If, if we used to have some people that were pro-Russia, it's it's completely gone now because you can't be pro-Russian when the Russians are actually like killing and raping women in some cities. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And, so and in a way, it's it's a it, it's hard to say, but there are positive things to this because yeah, now we are more united than we've ever been. So it's it, it would be impossible for for Russia to take us over at this point. Well, yeah, and good, we, good to hear. We saw it here in the United States as well after 9-11, you know, I mean, our country all of a sudden became super united as well. And, uh, you know, I wish it would have stayed that way. And, and sadly, yeah. I, I think that the I think it's the media that just continues to break us apart. And mm -hmm. But also, don't you think I, I, have, I have this suspicion that isn't it like the Russian, you know, media that just sort of not not the media, but like the spies that keep feeding you these conspiracy theory, theories to like divide you too because but i mean of course there are like stupid people that like to believe this but they need to they need right. to eat something and i think it's always putin yeah there there is definitely some of that for sure. for sure but i but i think that i don't know i think our country would be divided regardless i just the the, the media has a way to uh to really like push one side of a story um ignore and, yeah and ignore the other you know things what I mean? yeah so their ratings do better when they're fighting. Right, exactly. Keep yes. people in fear, keep people in... Uh, yeah. But I mean, we always other, have... Which is I mean, it happens everywhere. Can somebody, yes. some politician was saying recently, like, you know how we know we are winning this war? It's because I start seeing like some, some political debates on Facebook and stuff like that. Because people are already sort of going back to their normal life. That's <laughs> awesome. I mean, that's... Blaming, that's... blaming each other for <laughs> supporting this and that. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm curious because, I mean, we, we only hear what we hear in the news here. What, what is it? Why is Russia in Ukraine? I mean, what, what is, what is their reasoning? What are they and what, after? Yeah. And what do you guys, why do you guys think they're there? Because they're crazy. Um, <laughs> okay. Right, there you go. So, um, no. So historically, I'm not really good at history, so I'm not going to sure. give you any facts because um, it would be embarrassing. But so historically, um, Ukraine has always been like this nation. I mean, it's it's a it's a big place, so it's hard to unite 44 million people, but over this like amount of land. But we've always like felt that we are Ukrainian, like separate from whatever is happening in Moscow. Um, but you know, the the Russian culture is sort of really based in imperialism. Like they really like so they don't want to improve their own life. They want to take over other territories and then and then make their life worse so then they feel like we are living better <laughs> than yeah. these losers and so ukraine has always been like these you know the lesser they even call us their their version of the name of my country is the small russia oh wow <laughs> so 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 to, to them we are like the loser uh country but we are still somehow part of their nation we are just like the loser part and they are like the the cool you know I don't know, center. Um, but so that's what they feel. And they feel that still. Um, but to us, we've never felt that. It's just that we've never had, you know, any sort of army to fight back. So okay. you would always get like captured, like in invaded, like over centuries, again and again, even like in the USSR. Um, 
and yeah and if you if you read the comments like the rhetoric from just normal average russian people they still believe this they're like no but we are brother nations just don't you know don't fight back we'll just like take you over and we'll live all together and it'll be okay and nobody wants this right. um, because also like their media is lying to them saying oh we're not bombing civilians we're just like you know doing some like military stuff which is totally false um so yeah that's why they are supporting this because they think we should be a part of their you know black hole <laughs> yeah okay i've um, seen a lot of protests in russia yeah of people um, that are against this yeah um it's i mean it's a small i don't think it's enough people first of all and even the people that protest they are against you know aggression but i am not quite sure they don't think i'm like one of them and i don't feel like i am one of them you know what i mean sure so it's a very like deeply rooted some like false beliefs that nobody here shares um and also like they think we are all especially in the west i live in the west of ukraine they think uh, here everyone's like super anti-russian and we're like all you know nationalists and we want to kill them and the thing is like yes we do want to kill them now because they are literally now, invading yeah. our country <laughs> yeah <laughs> So yeah, so it's it's like you know it's a like Groundhog Day. They do this like at least twice a century. Sure. My, my friend, my friend recently uh, made this joke that because of our location, it is the fate of our country to like fuck Russia in the ass from time to time because they just will not <laughs> come down, you know. So they, they did it again, and now we, we have to fight back again. I love it. So yeah. <laughs> well, great that you that you can. Yeah. Um, it's, it's sad that you yes. have to go through it. That's for sure. So, um, so that's what, but there was, was there any real provocation or why, why did they this time around, what, did something spark them to come into your country? Or is this just a, we're, we're back, we're going to take over. Um, okay. So the theory goes, um, there's such like corruption and like fear and, you know, cause Russia is now totalitarian basically, uh, in, in the, like the circle of Putin, whatever. Um, so the people that were assigned to like research Ukrainian culture and and sort of, uh, you know, send some propaganda our way and divide us. Basically, they pocketed the money that they were supposed to spend on on like f false media and they would make false reports to Putin because he didn't want to hear anything else. So instead of saying, uh, hey, they are actually like very pro Ukrainian now, maybe like 15 years ago, it was a bit different. Now they're like very democratic. It's like very much, you know, the in the spirit of the country or the culture right now. Um, he didn't want to hear that. So they would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, they want to be Russian and they will they will. Uh, th there's this like phrase going on that they will meet your tanks with like flowers and they will like f smile and be happy that, that, that you've liberated them, which would just like completely false. They just reported the wrong information because they probably didn't think that he wants that he wants to invade Ukraine uh, for real. And yeah. then the second is they would be killed if they if they reported anything else. So to Putin and also there's this theory that he was like isolated in his in his bunker because of COVID and he's probably like sick because he's old. Um, so he like isolated himself completely and basically like live and he doesn't use internet anything. So he like lives in this like alternative reality where Ukraine is like suffering and really wants to be a part of the new USSR. And so to him, this was like the perfect timing because you know, because there's pandemic and everybody's, I don't know, I don't know what he was thinking, um, sure. but he's, he has completely miscalculated, which is great because now his country is collapsing. <laughs> and, um, um, Good. I'd like to, to touch on your president. Um, obviously, I didn't hear much about him until all this happened, um, which is quite a story on its own that he was an actor and he seems to be right there in the fight. So he's good for you. Um, but yes, was, I'm right. His journey, he was an actor and playing kind of himself for a while on a show. I'm I'm quite surprised. Well, actually, he was well known before that. So we have this um, form. It's like USSR form of stand up. We call it Kavan. Um, so it's basically like people doing stand up, but in groups. And so he in the 90s and like the beginning of 2000s, he was in the group and the group became like the comedy group. It became like super popular in Ukraine and also in Russia, I guess. Um, and they were doing these like regular shows. And then later when we had all these protests, they created this show about the president. And so by that time he was already quite well known. And he, but he was just like, let's, let's do this funny TV show about like the real president that, that we want. Because before Ukraine was quite corrupt. And then this cultural 
shift happened and so this was like very symbolic and then uh, I don't know if he planned this or it was just like ironic but he ran and then he won and I didn't vote for him <laughs> honestly because <laughs> because the his opponent was like a kind of like a businessman and his English was very good and I was like oh that's a good representative for us he's very serious um but but uh, actually I'm not sure if he would be performing as well right now um as Zelensky does so yeah it's it, and I'm we are all very surprised we are, we are very surprised also by how our army is performing because they keep giving us these reports about like the, the, they've killed 12,000 Russian soldiers by now. And I was convinced that they are lying to, to keep people, you know, positive. But I think it's true. And I'm like, oh, my God, how is this? Like, we are all so shocked that we are doing so well. I mean, obviously, we're not winning anytime soon. Um, and I mean, it's going to go on for probably weeks. But we're all kind of like in disbelief about how cool our country has become. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. And yeah, your your president has certainly uh, become a a worldwide global icon. celebrity now. I mean, yes, I think everybody yeah. everybody in America wishes he was our president right now. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so because that's so cool to hear because we grow up, you know, after the USSR collapse, we were like this loser country because because you know your economy is like completely gone and now you have to yeah. rebuild it. And so we're to Europe. We are like the like what is this we're like some post-soviet i don't know uh, foreign people and so we we grew up with this like inferiority complex uh before like the rest of the civilized wor world and to me like america when i was like younger when i was a teenager i was like oh like you have this like cool pop culture and all these movies and now it's like oh everybody thinks i'm cooler than them this is like <laughs> this is great <laughs> I'm completely like vindicated for a lifetime of feeling inferior, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Um, I've heard that the story of the the ghost of Kiev and in, in, in some of these things that have come up is that is that's I'm just curious how popular that those kind of things are. All the, all those memes. So we are not so it's really cool and funny to see. We aren't quite sure if they are true. I yeah. think because again, because our president used to be an entertainer, I think they are very good at, uh, you know, uh, the the media and the like the positive propaganda, the propaganda of the truth, like, like presenting the truth in a way that people actually want to see and going viral. Uh, and I think that's a part of it to like create all of these memes. There's a people like normal people who just pick it up because you can't just be like scared and sad all the time. You, you, you have to have a sense of humor. So there are like all these right. memes and we aren't even sure if this person is real or if it's like one person, maybe maybe it was like a couple of guys that that hit all of those uh, jets. But yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's uh, it's a part of the war propaganda in a positive way. Yeah, and it really, I mean, it doesn't like really it. matter if it's if it's true or not, if it gives you some, you know, if it gives you some, some good feelings and, you know, I mean, what's what's the yeah. problem with it? Like, I mean, so good. Yeah, and we have Positivity. all of these like, like memes about like, uh, you know, the Tsigans, the Romas that we have all over Europe, that even they s managed to, s to steal a tank which which uh because you know usually like people don't like them but but now we, got, we are like oh even romas are helping us to fight <laughs> against russians and this is not confirmed but it's still funny and like homeless people bringing uh, empty bottles to help make molotov cocktails all of these like urban stories and i think it just makes you kind of um keep stay positive do you, do you um, know how to make yeah. one yet no i'm not <laughs> are you learning <laughs> still haven't learned but the thing is so the thing is, um, I'm not really needed anymore because everybody's doing something. So the best thing I could do is to like actually, you know, spend money here to like keep economy going, like sure. shop okay. and use services. And and I'm like pressuring people to like open my gym because you can't just like sit at home and be nervous and, and, and scared and try to do something. And actually, I would say like 80% of the volunteers that, that do stuff, it's kind of, they do it to like feel useful, but it's not very useful because, you know, because you sort of just like are standing around and trying to help, but you're not needed. So yeah. I think the best thing that we could do right now is to just like try to keep living and try to make some money and just not not that the economy collapse. Because war is expensive, you know. Our mm -hmm. economy is rapidly declining as well. Yeah. So, so when this all broke out, where were you, and what, how did it change your course at the time of the breakout of the war? I mean, so. 
I was hoping it wasn't going to happen, but there were many indicators that it was going to happen. I mean, obviously, it's this is completely mad, so we didn't want to believe in this. But my friend, he he had like pressured me to buy like the last ticket, like the last flight to Berlin, because he was like, go to Europe. And I, and I, and I was thinking, I, I mean, I haven't been to Berlin for a while, so I should fly there and like, I don't know, party, do something. Um, so this was completely unplanned. So I was just like hanging out there, kind of feeling nervous, hoping nothing will happen. And then I had this like one like, great night. This my friend took me to like the Berlin Soho house, and there was jazz, and I was like so happy. I was like, oh, nothing's gonna happen. I'm just gonna fly back home and like keep living my life. Uh, and then that morning, I wake up and it's like, oh, we've been attacked at like diff seven different locations. Like the war is officially uh, has officially started. Um, and I mean, that was, you can't, it's very similar to, to 2013 when we had this like horrible, bloody uh, revolution, um, except that one wasn't the serious and didn't, I mean, it lasted a while, but it, it wasn't like the cities weren't getting bombed. But basically the only thing you can do in that situation is you basically just check the news every three minutes. <laughs> the, just the whole day that's all you do because you're trying to find some good news and there aren't aren't any um and so you just you're in that state for like days and days and days um and then yeah i kind of um was it a problem but, getting home um not really because so my friend he also like did a trip to croatia and so we were both just like hanging out hoping hoping we'll just go back home and it'll be fine like we're just like, okay we're just in europe you know it's fine um, and then there's there's a war. So he drove, he had a car. So he drove to um, Poland, to like the Ukrainian border um, with Poland. And I flew there, we met. And we were thinking, okay, like, what should we do? Should we stay? Like, what should we do? And so then we, I told this story on, on Josh's podcast. We went to the train station because he was going to leave. Then I was going to stay with his car and maybe help the refugees. And so he was going to take the train and we were convinced that nobody was going to be on the train to Ukraine. Because why would you want to go to Ukraine right. when there is war? Yeah. And so it's like this emotional moment. It's like so tense and we were both crying. And I'm like, it's almost like I'm sending him to war and it's like horrible. And so we got to this train station and there's like a giant line of people and they were like so angry and determined. And they've been waiting there for like six hours to get on this train because the train is completely filled with people because wow. uh, everybody wanted to go home <clears throat> and fight. And so it was like people our age, uh, so like no children, uh, obviously. So a lot of people left Ukraine, left their children somewhere and then went back. Um, and so to us, it was like really touching, but also really funny because we thought <laughs> We were convinced <laughs> he was just like going to get on the train that moment and, sure. the, and there was no way, there was no way he was going to do that. So we just, we left for a while and then we just got in our car and, and drove home just like that. Cause it, we didn't even discuss it. It was like, of course we're going home. Like, what are we, what am I going to do here? Like, let's right. just, let's just suffer with everyone else. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So Being home is, it means a lot to him and, and to, to see people or others see that you came back to help that whole group that's that went back on the train yeah. very touching to hear, you know, that they want to go fight and be with family and help out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, How, good. What does daily life look like for you? I mean, are you able to, like you mentioned going out and shopping, or, you know, where you're at, if, I mean, are you able to go do some of that stuff or. Yeah. So, I mean, um, so the actual danger zones are only in, so the, like, there are two cities, two major cities that are like dangerous to be in right now. Okay. And also the suburbs around Kiev, they've been like completely burnt down. Um, but but within Kiev, it's it's quite safe and, and shops are opened and you can like live normal life because it's not being actively bombed. Um, a few cities are being bombed a little bit, but there is not, not like active stuff going on. So you can still be relatively safe there. Here in the West, it's completely safe because because there's no point for them to bomb us. So even though we do have air raid sirens every once in a while, like like at five a.m., you have to like get up and hide. Um, but but that's because when like air, aircrafts come from the north from Belarus, um, everyone here has to hide just in case. But nothing has happened yet. So we do have that, but um, but we are like totally 
functional. So actually the like the center in the west of Ukraine can like co completely keep going and we the shops are reopening and everything from starting from this Monday. Everything okay. is basically reopening until like further notice. But because if you if you just look at the situation, it's very unlikely that anything is going to happen in this city. Like maybe, but we still have to keep the economy going. So yeah, yeah. Um, we do have curfew, so I don't I'm not, I don't think you can be outside from like 10 p.m. And, until 8 a.m. Something like that, or like 7 a.m. Um, but also, it's kind of I don't know. I, I'm scared to go outside when it's dark by myself, so I don't. I, I go out uh, during the day. You can't buy alcohol, which is upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> when you need when, it the most yeah. yes uh, i do this is like my last my last uh, drops of alcohol that i have oh, you do this. have a cocktail well cheers i well, do cheers i do you. cheers and what are you drinking that uh, we tried looking up some ukrainian drinks last night and... yeah, we did. yeah you have vodka um <laughs> very ukrainian um this right. is like i had some rum left and my my friend gave me this like weird concoction that you have to like mix with alcohol and let it sit and now it's like some disgusting flavor of strawberry i don't know um so i i'll, I'll have to drink this because i don't have anything else <laughs> <laughs> any port in a storm <laughs> sometimes yes. you just gotta take what you can get <laughs> yes so yeah I, I guess those are the major changes also many refugees came here um so there are like traffic jams and uh, hmm. tons of cars around um but and also funny thing is everything is like what is the word protected reinforced i'm not sure so like every every monument we have is wrapped in like cloth and protected by these so it's really strange every like valuable um architectural stuff okay. that we have in the city yeah i saw it did, you, didn't you have a picture you had a picture on your instagram didn't you of, of yeah. a statue okay yeah i, I did see that yeah okay. so that's that's kind of weird and then right next to it you have an ice ring full of children and so to me it's like what what is this reality i'm living, <laughs> living in like there's like war against all these you know people that fled cities that are actually being bombed i don't know it's yeah. really strange but it, it is i mean we just keep going because you can't do anything else like what are you you can't like, this is the third week of this okay. so you can't yeah. just sit at home and be nervous so you have to work and you know, I work from home, so to me, it's not it's not a big deal. And what and what is that work? What what is your daily? Oh, okay. <laughs> She's a CEO. I'm I'm letting her tell. Oh my god. Well, okay. Jeez. So, uh, <laughs> I um I do something called natural language processing, um, which is kind of like the field of AI. Um, so it's programming, it's programming and linguistics. I do call myself a CEO. Uh, I used to. I used to have, so before the pandemic, I used to have a team of people, the pandemic kind of ruined that. Now I, I do ha have a, a few clients, I have a few like contractors here and there. Um, so it's not like a big operation, but I, I, I do like having that, like, okay, I have my company and, and I'm the CEO of myself. <laughs> hey, hey, I hear Take you. It. I'm the CEO of this podcast. So, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. by the way, I'm the CEO of the podcast. I'm just saying. <laughs> Hmm, something, something seems, something's not right. <laughs> That's why you don't go into business with a friend. You just fantasy. He's got a fantasy oh. world over there. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I do basically a ton of programming and machine okay. learning and stuff like that. And I work from home on my computer and, yep. Nice. And, and you, uh, you, you play music and, yes. and sing. Yes, as a hobby. As a hobby. So uh, I was going to ask. I'm an amateur. Any of it released like, other than Instagram and stuff? Oh my God. No, no, no. I'm not. I don't think I'm there yet. Um, <laughs> I, I, th I feel like I need have like a long way to go with my like technique and everything else. But it's it's an interesting hobby because I keep learning and I keep taking classes. And um, yeah, but oh, maybe, well, maybe someday. Is that uh, one of your dreams is to become a published artist and singing? And uh, I'm not not really um i would like to just sort of casually perform that would be cool i don't think i have like any crazy ambitions i, I think i have more ambitions in in business and yeah. uh, and ai and stuff like that but uh yeah it's an interesting hobby just like learning to play the piano it's it's complicated but it's sort of i don't know it's it's creative so it, it distracts me from all of the programming For how, sure. long, how long have you been playing piano um i think 
like a few years, like maybe four years. I'm not very good. I'm not, I don't practice much. <laughs> <laughs> so don't, don't, don't ask me to play anything because you'll huh? be disappointed. <laughs> um, Actually, you'd sing something, your lovely voice. Oh my God. Uh, you can, so, okay. You can go, you can go uh, on Instagram and listen to the stuff that I prepared carefully. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's just a hobby. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not great. <laughs> Well, I enjoyed it. I did too. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yes, very much. And so. I see That's why I'm asking. I'm not going to ask you to play it, but there's a piano right over your shoulder. So, yes, there. it's a part of my office space. That's you're okay. You're in the office right now. Yeah. Well, you can see there's my ugly orange kitchen, and this is my office <laughs> corner. And yeah. Yeah. I, I, he's not going to ask you to play, but if you get the urge to play, hmm. that's okay. We're we're well, okay just, with that. Just behind your yeah. <laughs> Like just not watching like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> Boom. Right. <laughs> I'm I'm always curious. Um, how much how much of Western culture, like the the United States culture, gets to you guys? Like, like for instance, like or when? Like a, a big movie, The Batman just came out here in the United States. Does does that do those get to you guys right away? Like, does that get released right away, or is there a time gap there? Um, um, actually, I'm not sure because I usually don't follow that. But I mean often it's maybe it's like a week later but it's okay. pretty it's all pretty you know synchronized i think we, we're, we have a lot of western culture in the year I think. yeah okay and also like with netflix you get everything right away oh sure um, yeah but what are you asking how much influence we get uh, here or yeah i was just kind of curious like how yeah how much of the western culture gets there but it sounds like it, it does and you guys i mean probably watching the same movies and and uh listening to the same music and uh yeah for sure for sure i think we are pretty integrated i think not everyone is fluent at english as i am so it, it's it's a little mm. you know we have our own own little it's it's not exactly like the american culture right it's yeah. it's, it's like the ukrainian culture that's sort of consuming like the rest of the world consuming yeah. like your hollywood movies um but i think i think i'm kind of an exception that in, in that i very early i really became interested in, in in all kinds of american pop culture and i was i really liked youtube and i would watch all these like you know american kids post these videos um so i think even my worldview has changed because of that because of the internet and it's like yeah. more integrated and stuff yeah absolutely so any um artists that you um influenced you in your singing or your piano playing what got you to play certain artists or just the love of music uh, i think i've always liked music i like um an artist i like amy winehouse for some reason i like fiona apple even though she's she's kind of unhinged but i like her. <laughs> I, I love i love her i actually saw her live once she was fantastic mm -hmm. really yeah. so did i god yeah. it'd be so cool um to see her live uh, who else i think I, I can't even name anything right now i think many many things a lot of the western pop culture oh, i like but uh, go ahead go ahead I like American stand-up. Yeah. You, yes. <laughs> like Josh Potter. <laughs> yes. I actually, I saw him. Um, so I traveled to Budapest and I saw Tom Segura and, and Josh Potter was opening for him. So I saw him live. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yes. That was pretty cool. And I saw him like in the lobby, just walk right past me. And I was like, oh, this person from the internet. I did, <laughs> you know, I see them live. That's cool. Um, who's your, who's your favorite comedian? Um, Favorite stand-up is probably either Tom Segura or Burt Kreischer. Yeah. Currently. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's my that's my Tinder question. Is that's how I find the red flags. <laughs> to ask. Wait, wait, I wait. ask who's your so, favorite comedian. So is is Tom Segura a red flag for you? Uh, or no, no, no. <laughs> that's a that's a big that's a green flag. But but uh, Bert's, Bert I, might be a red flag. That should be a red <laughs> flag. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> no, so my so the the only red flag is if your favorite comedian is Patrice O'Neill, I'm probably not going to go on a date with you. There's something if you if you think that his rhetoric is like great, then something's wrong. But the the dumbest answer I've gotten on Tinder, um, one guy said Mr. Bean is his favorite <laughs> comedian. I was like, next. Yes, and I did not. I did not reply to that. <laughs> uh, I love to hear that Tinder is a thing in the in Ukraine. Absolutely, huh. Tinder is a thing. 
thing everywhere. Yeah. Well, it's, you just, you know, you get your own little worldview. You're stuck right. in your own little place and you're like, yes, huh, that happens there too. So I'd imagine. You're really? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the middle. I would like, obviously you have your own bands over there, local bands and. Yes, we do have some pretty cool bands. Um, if you can. Okay. So the, the two Ukrainian bands that I like the most, if you, you're probably not going to understand the name. So the one is Okan Elze. Um, you can, I, I'm not sure if you can Google that, but they are, yeah, they are pretty cool. And the other one is, um, Boombox. So that is sort of like a jazzy funk, Ukrainian, Russian music, okay. um, which is really cool. So if, if you can, if you can Google Boombox and Spotify that, that's, that, uh, one can that, get the... that one's is my favorite. Yeah. Boombox, the first one is stuff. <laughs> you know, okay. you know, you'd have to spell the first one. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's no? that's hard. It's hard. I'm gonna text it to you. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Because I'd be very curious to to listen to them and see what it's like. Um, yeah. Not that it's it's completely different, but just right. Right. I always love finding new music. It is, it's oh, I mean, it's always going to be different because I am a linguist. Um, so to me, I immediately go, okay, so our our language is like it's, it has a different structure. So the poems are going to be have different structure and different length. So it's immediately going to sound di different to you, um, different from English. But I, I, I really think it's sort of beautiful and, and interesting and different. And I think you guys, it's funny how Americans sort of you have your own like little country, not your, your own huge country that's completely like isolated by these oceans. And it's like so inconceivable to you that you can like even fly to Europe casually you know like yeah. you're really isolated you have really isolated yourself and there's like a, a whole a whole world outside of your culture that's obviously really big and and, and it influences everything else but but beyond that you know every country has some interesting stuff that, that oh yeah that it's not like weird and foreign and complicated it's it's you know it's 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 funny and and, and i don't know and fun so, so I, if the, yeah. it Explore. If there was no war going on and an American wanted to visit Ukraine, where would you tell them to go? Obviously to Lviv, because this is where I live. Uh, this is my favorite place. Um, but also, yeah, Kyiv. I mean, in the West, you have a few. In the East, you have Dnipro and Kharkiv. Kharkiv is being completely destroyed right now. But before the war, it was a pretty cool place to go. Um, Odessa in the South is pretty cool. Um, I think those are like the biggest the most interesting um yeah. places cool yeah. yeah love to visit how long how long have you uh spoke english have you your whole life or i just like i i mean we, we are taught english in uh, in school okay but it's like very sort of mediocre i just picked it up I think I was really bored when I was like a teenager. I think I was bored at school and I needed to to kind of consume something. And I had internet and then I had all these like English blogs and English like YouTube uh, people. And okay. I had to like I had to understand them. So I like forced myself to learn to understand this this different interesting culture. And um, yeah, I think it just became fluent just just because of that. I was just consuming a lot of. A lot of stuff, and it and it just keep, and it, you know it keeps going. Like now, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I, I like uh, your mom's house. I think I've been listening to that for like eight years now. Wow. Um. Yeah, just every day. So, and also I'm a linguist, so I work with English every day. Sure. So, yeah. Right. Right. Um. Ca call me an idiot, but what is the uh lang What is the language in Ukraine? It's the Ukrainian language. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no. Um. So, yeah, so I speak Ukrainian. We do have a fair amount of Ukrainian people that speak Russian. Just historically, that's what they use at home. But I, I, we are pretty much all bilingual, so I understand Russian. I, I'm not that good at speaking Russian just because I never use it, but I understand it fluently. So very often you just will have like a bilingual conversation. Just yeah. I oh. speak Ukrainian, the other person speaks Russian, and it's all fine. So, oh wow, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's a bilingual country, many, many people who are nationalistic inclined would say, no, it's a Ukrainian language and everybody should speak Ukrainian. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's one, one of the biggest examples of you saying like Americans being isolated is we don't, you know, most Americans speak one language and that's more like, everybody should just speak this. <laughs> you know, like, And I, yes. I, I think- But also get, in Europe- mm -hmm. Oh, I was just gonna say, when you get out of our country, it seems like a lot of people are bilingual right. and speak many languages, so. 
because in Europe, you, I mean, you have small areas that, you know, have one language, but then those areas have to somehow uh, kind of mingle. Right. And so you have many people who are bilingual, trilingual, you know, some people are like fluent at four languages because if you grew, if you grew up, like, I don't know, in Switzerland, it's pretty easy for you to like know French, uh, English, German, and Spanish because like French and Spanish are very similar. English is like you have to know it because it's international and German. It's also like because it's around you. So it, it's 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 very it's very normal. If you just grow up, if you're like a child in this in this uh, you know culture that and you hear all of these languages, it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, I did, I never I never actually learned Russian. I just heard it when I was little, and that's how I understand it. Wow! Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. I wish I wish I, I pick up languages like that. Yeah, I I can't. I can't either. But we'd love for you to to say cocktails with dimples in the beard in Ukraine. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is. I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> Cause I, now I need to think about how to translate dimples. Cause it's a very specific word. Very specific person. Oh my God. <laughs> who's, you know... who's, wait, wait, who's the dimples and who's the beard? <laughs> <laughs> I like, I, sometimes I like to mess with people and say it's the opposite way, but no, I'm beer. I'm the beard. <laughs> you, do you have, do you have the dimples? Yes, I, I do. I have, I do I have, have one. I have only one. Oh yes. Well, you, you have a daughter that has one. I, my, my, yeah, my daughter has one. I have two. I actually have four, but I can't show you the other ones because we're a family <laughs> oh, <okay>. show. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, actually rare. I mean, you're supposed, you, you should be like quite fit to have dimples in your lower back. I am. Well, yeah, yeah. obviously. <laughs> that, that's you, nice. You work out. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Now I'm glad um, this is going to bother me because I don't know how to translate dimples into Ukraine. Okay, I'll, I'll text. I'll text it later. I'll, I'll record a voice message for you. <laughs> you know what's funny oh, is we, you. we uh we recently talked to somebody in Germany and she she had the same thing like where she couldn't there was something about it she couldn't. Yeah, so it must be a yeah an odd one to trans or not said a lot. I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. So you, we're we're part of a, a crew of with dimples. You know, not everybody has them. We're we're special. Yes. Yes. How about just, how about in Ukraine? Just thank you for inviting me on your show. <laughs> just just so we get a sample of the language. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> That's what we like to do. Or, is you make, know, you make, could say anything you want. And right. Say it's. I could, uh, yeah, I could say just go to hell with your. <laughs> right. <laughs> wanted to hear Ukrainian. Um, yeah, we could hear Ukrainian swear words. That'd be fun too. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, what? Okay. Uh, Dziakuju, ci zaprosili mnie na swoje show. That was. Thank you for inviting me to your show. Um, I could translate some swear words for you. Yes, please. Um, we could. We, we could. We could do some. Um. Yeah, we could call Putin a few a few names. I don't I know. Already, what, do I, to, what do you want yeah, to know? <laughs> I already did. I, I called him a few names in the intro that we did before you came on. So I'm, what, what, uh, what do you want to call him? Yeah, what? <laughs> oh, my God. So many things. This is a, we things. are not a family friendly show, so don't worry about it. Go go to Talon. I, just, he's I, a I mean, a motherfucker. Uh, motherfucker. I am dick sucker. I've never I've n- never been this angry at a nation <laughs> i just want i'm just i'm just watching the russian economy decline and i am so completely happy like right? disgustingly like jolly about the ruble just becoming becoming worthless i'm like yes mm-hmm. i want you all to starve because you've killed thousands probably at this point at least three thousand ukrainians for no reason and yeah, um, I just want the worst possible life for all of you. <laughs> and I mean, you can, I guess that's a terrible thing to say, but I don't know what else one can say when there is a war in your country. Yeah. No, I agree. It brings out the worst in people and as it should. Yeah, right. And when yeah. it's completely unjustified and somebody just comes into your country and pretends they're, it's theirs, I, what, what, would, what would anybody feel but anger and, mm-hmm. uh, and hatred? So yeah. Totally makes sense. So what other podcasts do you listen to? Um, okay, let's see. Your mom's house. I do like sometimes listen to Dr. Drew. Yeah. yeah. Um, like um, the 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 one with uh, ugh, the Tom and Bert. What is it called? Two, oh, two, two bears, one cave. Two bears, yeah, but yeah. That's, 
but that's like too testosterone for me that's uh, <laughs> I, I don't always get it it's it's too, well, it's too male for me well if you'd want a podcast that's a little more on the feminine side you could watch cocktails, cocktails with, with dimples yeah. in the beard yeah you do always interview women what is up with that <laughs> <laughs> we had well they're they're nice okay the majority they're you're, nicer you're to look at than guys yes. I, I mean uh-huh. that's, yeah. More, they have, yeah they have more important things to say yeah we're just very uh empower we like to empower females yes. that's uh, let's just put it that way okay <laughs> okay you, you got out of it that's good <laughs> i think it i think it kind of started um, with we assumed a lot of guys were listening to our show and when we started to think about guests it was like well what are guys going to want to see and we went straight to playboy playmates and we got lucky right. enough and started to get a few of them on and and now we've kind of expanded and so but yeah. that's an a, interesting direction yeah, they they to have to. they have fun <laughs> stories to tell. They do. They really do. So, and they're, they're... I do okay. I don't know if it, I mean it's not a podcast, but I really do like Howard Stern. Yeah. I like searching for like the old recordings from like the nineties when it's like really sexist and just horrible. <laughs> I don't know why. Because to me, it's like back oh my god. Was, back when he was actually funny. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Back back when it wasn't as PC. Um, back when he was and, um, fighting for freedom of speech but now he's against it. So I don't know. He is. He could fuck off as far as I can concern. But oh, back yeah. then he was hilarious. <laughs> and also like you can't even like in Ukraine, you can't even get the, the modern recordings because they don't even allow to post them. But oh. the stuff from the 90s, I, I still get on like it uploaded illegally on YouTube. And it's, it's very, uh, it's very entertaining for me. Like, oh, the fights that just go on for three hours. It's great. <laughs> just, <laughs> just so dumb. It's just always so dumb. I don't know. It's, it's awesome. My, my yes. brain doesn't have to work. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's the nice thing about it. It's a it's a break. Yeah. That's what it's supposed yeah. to be. That's what it's supposed to be. So that's why you want to, um, again, thank you for making it. And I'm not cutting you off. I'm just saying, you know, we got uh, serious there for a bit, but I like to, you know, throw in some lighthearted humor just to make our day. So appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. I mean, are we, are we done? <laughs> I, I, sounded like, it sounded like it was. And that's why I wanted to stop. It was just more of a yeah. thing. Yeah, whatever. You've broken, you've broken the broken, flow. I broke it all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I, yeah. Look at the flow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fuck that up. All right. Anyways. Bring it back. Bring it back. You know what would really work right now? What? It's a little musical. <laughs> a little musical interlude? <laughs> <laughs> there it was. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so where do you see uh, things going from now? Do you for, for you now in the future? Do you think this is going to last for years? Or... I don't think I don't think years. Um, I mean, it's, it's just going to keep being horrible. But I think maybe months. Um, I, I keep hoping for like some cool happening in Russia and yeah. then just like stopping randomly. That's always a chance, but I don't think it's a big chance. Um, I think it's going to be another few months uh, but yeah. it's the thing is you can't like you, you can exist in a war like you can't keep going you can't keep like keep going with your yeah. life and the economy so i mean i had i had plans for this year and i decided like very firmly that i'm not going to let putin just fuck up my year so i'm gonna just keep doing what i wanted to do this year um uh, good good so, okay. yeah well and it, i think he's at the point where it's you know it's in he'd be embarrassed to stop now so he's almost got a oh um, he does just yeah. out of uh Safe face, keep he'd, going just to be a dick. Be, he'd be embarrassed. Like th- there is no course of events where he wouldn't where he isn't going to be embarrassed. Right. Like exactly. what is like that's true. Like there's just he's not gonna take over anything. I don't yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm so confused. I think he's just confused and uh, and cornered. Well, I love your positivity, powerful. that's for sure. That yeah, he's, he's just not gonna basically he's about to get his ass whooped by his little brother, and that's always an embarrassing thing for the big <laughs> brother. That's you know. <laughs> yes. I mean, See, we are cool. We are we're just cooler now. Like it's over. Like sorry, the whole world thinks we are cooler. It's you, he's he's already lost the war just because of that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Exactly. Exactly. And turn that on him. Okay. Well, thank you so much for giving us some time and letting us, you know, kind of hear about Pick things your brain. From, from there and and uh, and getting to know you. It's it's been fun getting to know you. Thank so. you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if you ever, you know, if you ever get your your music. And you want to come back? Uh-huh. Play, play for us. Absolutely. And 
we would love to have you anytime you want. So yes, open invitation. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Do you want to promote your Instagram or your anything that you'd like to get people to? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. Follow me on Instagram. It's uh, it's a complicated name, but I, uh, I like it. To me, it's funny. It's Oksana is so meta because my company is called Metamova. Um, so yeah, go follow me. Uh, sometimes I post funny stuff. Sometimes it's just me singing. Um, but you know, either way, it's 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 quality content. I, I put some effort into it. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. It go, has check, been. go check out her singing and piano playing. It's beautiful. So oh, absolutely, thank you. thank you so much. And we'll put it in the show link so people can can find you from there. So, so thank you so much. so much. Stay safe. We, yes, we, I'll, yes, I'll try not safe. to die. <laughs> Well, I said, I said, to, I said to Dimples over here, I said, you know, she's, she's got a good sense of humor. Cause right. when I was asking you about it, you're like, if my country still exists, I guess I'll so. come on. So, yeah. <laughs> she's definitely got, definitely got a good sense of humor about it. And, and I think you kind of have to, right. What else are you going to do? So yeah, you, know. you do. Well, we, we wish you the best and we're praying for you. So thank you so much. Thank Take you. care. You bet. Right. Have a great Thanks, day guys. Thank you for listening. The tavern is closed for now, but we'd love to have you back for more fun next time. Seriously, though, get your asses out of here.